We're looking at a system of equations and we are going to solve this one differently. You recall the last time we started solving a system we graphed both equations and we could graph both of these equations and if the two lines were to cross on an integer or whole number uh, grid on the graph then we would have a solution that would be pretty easy to do. We're going to try this a different way though. We're going to use what's called substitution which means we're looking for one of the variables to be by itself. And if you notice, this particular y variable right there is by itself. And this right here is what y equals. y is equal to 5x minus 1 in the second equation. And so what we're going to do is since y is equal to 5x minus 1, we're going to take the y out of the first equation and we're going to substitute 5x minus 1 in its place. So this top equation is really not gonna be written as x plus y uh, equals negative seven again. Now it's gonna be x plus, and in place of the y, we're gonna write uh, 5x minus one. And then that is all equal, of course, still to negative seven. And what that did was it took a two variable equation and turned it now into a one variable equation. We can collect our like terms. We get six x minus one equals negative seven, and then it's just a two-step equation after that. Um, take, we'll add the one, get rid of it, six x equals negative six, and when we divide by six, x is a negative one. And now it's time to find out what y is, and we're gonna take that particular negative one, and we're gonna just take it and put it back into this equation right there. So instead of saying five times x, it's gonna be five times negative one. So this will say y equals five, but then in place of x, we need to figure out what y is. So we're going to replace that x with its value, minus one. <clears throat> and we at y here, that's a negative five and a negative one, which makes negative six. So the solution to this particular system is an ordered pair. If I were to graph these two equations, they would cross at left one and down six units or x is negative 1 and y equals negative 6. So these problems that we're going to solve by substitution, the thing that makes them tailor-made for substitution is we already have one particular variable by itself. In this case, we have x by itself. And so I'm looking for the top equation, and wherever I see x, I'm going to be able to put in this set of values, negative y plus 3. So I'm going to replace that x right there with a negative y plus three. So I'm going to rewrite the top equation and I'm going to get a distributive property situation because that says three times x and that means three times x. And this right here is what I'm going to put in place of x. So it's going to be three times negative y plus three. That's what x is. Uh, and then I'm going to continue on with the rest of my equation. Minus three y equals three. So I'm gonna go ahead and distribute the three since that's my next step. This right here becomes negative three y and then also plus nine. And then another negative three y equals three. Let's go ahead and we got a couple of like terms right there. So we've got two negative numbers, negative three y and negative three y make negative six y plus nine equals three, and we'll take away the nine. We just have a two-step equation at this point, and negative six y equals, uh, don't drop the sign, that's a negative six, and when we divide by the negative six, we're gonna get y equals one. So right now, if I were building a solution, the second number is a positive one, because that's y, and I'm gonna put that one right in place of that y. So I have this equation, x equals a negative y plus three. And now I'm just gonna replace the y with a one. So instead of saying negative y, it's gonna be negative because the minus doesn't change. And then the y is just a one. I'm just putting a one right there. Plus three, and we get x is two. So our final ordered pair would be two comma one. Now let's go to one last problem that is tailor-made, easy for substitution, 
And the reason that it's easy, again, is because we already know one of the letters is already by itself. In this case, y is equal to uh, 4. And we're going to replace that y right there with a 4. So uh, I'm going to copy the top equation. It's just a negative 2x plus 3y. But then in 3y becomes 3 times 4 because we just substituted the 4 in for the y. And that equals 12. And we get negative 2x plus 12 equals 12. And when we take away a 12 on both sides, I end up with 0 on the right. So don't lose the 0. Um, x is going to be 0. We'll divide by a negative 2. And we'll get x is 0. And the problem already told you what y is. y is 4. We could have actually just started off by saying, well, gee, if y is 4, let's just put that as part of our solution because that's the only way that we can satisfy the second equation. And the first one is x is 0. And the way we know this is the solution is all we have to do is pick one of the equations. And I'm going to pick the top one. And I'm going to substitute in for x. I'm going to substitute in for y. And I'm going to see if I get a true statement. So instead of saying negative 2x, that's negative 2 times 0. That's x. Plus 3y, which is 3 times 4. And we want to know if that's true. I just copied down the equation. Well, this is 0 plus 12 equals 12. And that's a yes. And when it is happy like that, that means you have your solution. And that is one that is tailor-made for substitution when you already have one of the letters already by itself.